Well, I'm Pastor Heath, and I am welcoming you once again to our uh, devotion series that are coming from the last chapter of Romans. Let's pick up on Romans chapter 16, verse 25, as I talk to you today about the fact that God is unlimited. Last time we said that God is unstoppable. Well, now the Bible teaches us he's also unlimited. Romans 16, verse 25, Paul says, Now to him who is able to establish you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. I love that word, establish. It means that God has literally taken you and has turned you into the way of salvation. He, he turns us to walk toward Christ. He turns our eyes upon heaven. And the moment we hear the gospel, and the moment we put our trust in Jesus, we are turned to that eternal home where we will one day be with Jesus forever. The same word is used to describe Jesus when he finally set his face toward Jerusalem. He would go to Jerusalem to give his life and nobody could stop him from doing that. And that same word is where we come with the word establish. He turned his face toward Jerusalem. It can also be used to describe what God did with Abraham. You know, God called Abraham out of his own country, away from his own pagan society, away from his father even, his family. And God turned Abraham's attention to a land called Canaan. And God gave many wonderful promises to Abraham that he would become a nation, that he would have a son with his wife, Sarah, become a nation, become prosperous, and that the nation that he would build would become like the center of the world and they would bless all the other nations of the world one day. And so Abraham was called to just simply trust and obey. And he did. But as Abraham was established and set upon that way, think about it. There are so many things that had to work out in Abraham's life. I mean, if, if Abraham is going to become a great nation of people, first of all, he's got to have a son, right? And, and do you remember that at the time, he and his wife could bear no children? His wife, Sarah, was already very old in age and she was barren. She never had any children. For God to be able to do this great thing for Abraham, he would have to provide a miracle right from the beginning. Not only that, but as, as Abraham would, would move throughout the land of Canaan, he would have to develop so many relationships with all kinds of people. Even with Egypt, the Pharaoh and the Egyptians, he would have to establish relationships with the people of Canaan. He would also have to, he would also have to become prosperous and, and grow as a mighty nation. He would have to make a lot of money. Therefore, he would have to have a, have, have a lot of livestock. He would have to have workers. He would have to have a, a skill to know how to do these things. And, and beyond all that, he would need wisdom. He would need to be protected. In other words, there were a lot of details that had to be worked out. So many things. I mean, God calls Abraham to go to Canaan and he promises to make him into a nation. All those details that had to be worked out, God revealed, God demonstrated that when God calls us, there is no limit to what he can do because God showed that all those details that needed to be worked out for Abraham, God did every single one of those things. They had a child. Abraham had relationships. Abraham was prosperous. Abraham did have workers. Abraham did have wisdom and God protected him. There was nothing that God could not do. There was no limit to what he was able to do. Listen to what the Bible says about the faith of Abraham. Romans chapter four says this, that Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. It wasn't because of Abraham. It wasn't because of his talent and strength and ability. It was God who made the promise that was able to accomplish that promise. And through it all, God shows there is no limit. Again, we can look at Paul in Ephesians chapter three, and here's what Paul says to us. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. He can do more than you can imagine. There is no limit to God. Remember that and may that give you courage today.
God bless you.